This took place maybe around the age of 13. Let me set the scene. I had my first serious boyfriend, Sam. Sam was a nerdy kind of guy. We had met at church. When he had asked me out, I was over the moon as another girl had been talking to him at the same time. I was flattered that he had chosen me. At the point in time this story takes place, I was having a lot of issues at home. I had attempted to take my life during my relationship and had a lot of issues with self-harm. My relationship with my parents was terrible, still is. That probably explains why I never told them any of this. Besides my personal problems, I'd say the relationship was running smoothly until Sam came into contact with Allison. I don't recall exactly when or where Sam met Allison. I believe it was at his air cadets. It's almost like she just appeared. Whenever Sam and I were going through a rough patch, he would talk to Allison and she would console him. It made me really uncomfortable at the time being a jealous 13-year-old. Our key communication was over Skype as he lived a good 40 minutes away from me. On average, I saw him twice a week. Once on a Saturday in which I would catch two buses to his home. The second being at church on a Sunday. He would often tell me stories about his long conversations with Allison. How she was hilarious, but she didn't like me although I had never spoken to her myself. I assume this was due to him mainly speaking to her during our childish arguments. I first came into contact with Allison during an argument with Sam. We were bickering about something unimportant and a message popped up on my Skype. It was from Allison. I don't recall what exactly the message said as this was in 2014, but I tried to gain access to my old Skype to go through the messages but have not been able to. But I do remember her insulting me repeatedly and saying I didn't deserve Sam and I should have died in regards to ending my life. I responded harshly, telling her to screw off or something of the sorts. Was it polite? No. I was extremely standoffish at this age. My response seemed to anger her. I was bombarded with call after call. I declined every single one. I reported to Sam what had gone on and he said he had told her to leave me alone. All was good for a while. This didn't affect me too much. This was semi-normal for me as high school relationship drama was almost an everyday occurrence at my school. Looking back on it, Sam was almost definitely cheating on me but I was too naive and in childish love to care. My second incident with Allison was on a summer afternoon. I was relaxing on Sam's bed after an afternoon of messing around. He had gone to complete a chore in the kitchen and had left his computer on. I decided to check my Facebook and went to log in. On the screen was a chat with Allison. Being curious, I scrolled through the chat. I was greeted with an onslaught of naked images of her. This started a huge fight as you can imagine. Sam said that she was just a jealous stalker girl. My third interaction with Allison was at my local library. Allison must have been 16 as she was completing some work experience at the time. I have and still am an avid book reader. I was there with my mother and sister when I saw her at the counter. She stared me down and it took me aback as I didn't recognize her to begin with. It then clicked. I was more annoyed than anything. I didn't pick up a book instead of opting to hang around my sister as she checked some books. Allison's eyes never left me. The time came to leave as Mum was renting the books out, she made small talk with Allison. I was surprised at how polite and well-mannered she was in comparison to the girl who had messaged me. I began to feel guilty for the way I had responded to her. Once at home, I hopped on my phone and wrote a message to her, apologizing for the way I had spoken to her. The message I received back from her was a different tone altogether. She started listing all these terrible names. She said I had no right to date Sam, and all I brought him was misery. This time her words really did affect me. I called Sam and begged him to never contact her again. I remember vividly sobbing and crying for hours. This happened a couple more times each time escalating in severity. Threats to beat my lights out were sent. My mental health was greatly affected. I wasn't afraid of her, but more upset at the things she said. I never took a single threat seriously. To this day, I have no idea why Sam stayed in contact with her, and I began to avoid the library. 
and my relationship with Sam continued. One day I got into a large argument with my mother and called Sam sobbing. He consoled me and told me it was going to be alright. Impulsively I decided to go for a run, leaving my phone at home. I wanted to be out of the home. I was gone for maybe an hour or two. I returned home to an onslaught of messages from Sam deeply concerned for my well-being. I apologized and explained the situation, a reminder this entire time that I had not blocked Allison. She messaged me with the usual drivel. I was so used to her threats at this point it hardly fazed me. The same threat happened again. I'll beat your lights out. Calling her bluff, I replied, Well, go on then. You don't even know where I live. She replied with my address, and my heart skipped a beat. All the threats of violence were all too real now. I remember shaking uncontrollably. I sobbed down the phone to Sam. I begged him to block her and never to speak to her again. He continued to speak to her, although I never did. New girls appeared in her place, but none were as invasive as her. We ended the relationship after a year and a bit. In one of the messages I sent to him regarding our breakup, I spoke about Allison and his stalker girls. It's been a long time since then. Sam and I occasionally speak, and I'd say we are on good terms. He's in a band, and I'm studying still. At the time, I didn't realize the severity of her actions. The fact that she had gone onto the computer base at my library and searched for my address didn't pass my mind until many years later. It still sends shivers down my spine. What would she have been actually capable of doing, I'll never know. I truly hope no one finds out. I tried finding her online out of curiosity to no avail. If she was capable of that amount of calculation at 16 years old, I wonder what she was capable of now. I hope this serves as a word of warning to parents to look out for their kids. I know this story may not be as severe as many on this subreddit, but I thought I'd share this terrifying tale. I practice Taekwondo in a stadium in my city. It's a dangerous place, but I have been living all my life there and nothing has happened to me, so normally I forget about the robs and drugs and all of that. One day I was chatting with a friend in the entrance of the stadium and there was a guy shirtless and with a lot of muscles. He was just standing in front of a wall reading something so none of us care about him. Some minutes later we say goodbye and leave to different places. I decide to walk to my house. I live about 30 to 40 minutes away because I had time and was a nice day so while I was walking I saw the same guy from before. He was walking in the street and fighting with the drivers. All I thought was that he was on some drugs and just kept walking. About 10 minutes later he disappeared. Some minutes passed and nothing happened. I was just listening to music and walking. But 20 minutes later, or more or less, the guy passed me. I was kind of shocked because he appeared from nowhere, but he passed me so I thought I was being way too paranoid. Then he stands in the same cross I was and he watched me. I felt weird and texted my mom that I was close to home and asked her to open the door. It's important to describe my house for this. I live in a third floor. But it's not a normal building. There are houses in the ground level, with second floor backyard and everything. In between two houses there is a stair that lets you in the third floor. There are more houses over the ones on the ground level, and I live on the third. So when I get to the stairs the door was open and my dog was waiting for me. So I sit on the floor and pet her, then my mom was like, Be careful, there's someone behind you. Move so he can pass. I reply with an okay, stand up, and went to the stairs without looking back. We started walking to my door, I went inside my house and looked back, and there he was. The shirtless guy was behind me all along, and he just was standing outside of my house. My mom closed the door and freaked out. She asked me if I knew him, if he had talked to me or something. I looked at her confused, still shocked. She started calling my dad loud enough so the guy outside could hear it. My dad didn't hear her, but that was enough. The guy finally left. This happened some months ago, but it still freaks me out. He saw me, and he followed me, and now he knows where I live. <laughs> 